like a champ. Can't wait. Do you go right up there from here, or do you have to go back to Hawaii first? No, no, no. Uh, media day, straight to there. Uh, get to know the, the lay of the land. See where I'm going to uh, plant my uh, kalu farm. Because Hawaiian's taking over, so I can't wait. <laughs> Well, do you ask for these Canadian cards? Is this your first, or your third interview, or fourth Canadian card? Ah, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Canada, I don't know if you guys know, you guys can go look, but most of my main events was in Canada. My first ever one was in Saskatoon. It's kind of funny, but, um, you know, in April, I told I told the UFC, no matter what happens on this fight, I want to fight in, um, I want to fight in summer, and and, uh, and I want to defend the 145 belt. So after the April fight, you know, knowing my luck, they decided to do two cards in, in summertime. You know, I was thinking like, oh yeah, summertime, like meaning to get international fight week, you know? And they said, yeah, and then I should have known it wasn't that easy because uh, the fight, the fights got, the, the schedule got announced. There's two pay-per-view cards there. One was in Vegas and one was in Canada. I called up my manager. When I saw it, and I told him, I know where we're fighting <laughs> in summer. I tell you that much. You know, they keep I keep uh, giving them a hard time about me getting iced in Toronto. I guess it's like, oh, here it is. Here's the here's the summer in Canada that you always wanted, Max. So it's it's good times. Well, there's a lot of talk that GSP's not fighting more Warriors and Bellator. It's uh, not really the face of Canada. Uh -huh. Oh, dude, you are wrong. You looking at them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you know, we see it happens. You know, you know, we call it the 10th island. The Canadians, they, I got nothing but love for them, man. They got nothing but love for me. Uh, it was Canada Day the other day. I don't know if you guys saw the meme. You know, you know, uh, famous uh, or famous or successful MMA fighters had a picture with uh, GS. Had four guys: uh, GSP, um, Roy McDonald. I don't know who the other one was, and then there was me. So. You Canadians, I love you guys, eh? <laughs> Max, why was it important for you to drop down again and defend the 45 bucks? I always wanted to, you know, I always wanted to. And we, we got our unfinished business, you know. Um, there's there's a lot of guys now coming up that that uh, that are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, uh, you know, and Frank Gary is a legend, you know. He's a legend. I don't, third time's a charm, I guess, you know. First time... Uh, Took three times to book this fight. I can't wait, you know. And and I always said, you know, a, a king is a a king. A champ is a champ, and a king is a king of someone who defend their land, you know, who defend their belt. And that's what true kings are. That's what true kings do. And uh, I want to come back down. Is there is there any risk? Because I mean, the fight against Dustin wasn't that long ago. It was uh -huh. in April. It was a really hard fight. Uh -huh. you know, one of the best fights of the year. Uh -huh. Both of you guys took, took some damage. Uh, any risk in, in coming back so quickly? Yeah, you know, you, you know, no disrespect to Dustin Poirier, but I think he even said, like, you know, some of the, like, when we're talking about damage, I, he, I think he even said that it might look better than what it was, you know what I mean? And, uh, I, you know, I felt like I got a cut, you know, like, if that knee landed clean flush, I probably would have been looking at him from, from, uh, from my back, you know what I mean? But I didn't. It just grazed. I got, I got a cut, and it was, it was a cut. It is what it is. I went to the doctors, and you know there there's other fighters that night that went to the doctors that had to stay for for overnight and and couple of days. I heard I was tripping out. You know we went to the doctors. They we did the test. Everything came back fine. Stitched me up. I got to leave. You know like I, I was fine. You know and my team. I got one of the best teams behind me. You know I got one of the best teams behind me. They they make sure medical wise and recovery wise that I'm always good. And we're not going to do something, we're not going to ever get forced into do something that we don't want, you know. And um, I got some of the best uh, medical team that, that actually goes back to Canada, you know. Like, uh, you know, the Toronto Raptors, uh, their medical, their nutritionist lady that helps them and do all their medical stuff, she helps me, you know. And uh, it, it's super, it's super cool, you know. And um, the number one thing in, in a career is recovery, I think. You know, recovery and rest for sure. And uh, this is not the case here. I know how much you want to become a double champ, but they do say you learn more from a loss. Is there something you can at least take away from that fight that uh, you bring to this? Oh yeah, there's a lot. You know, there's a lot. I, I if you guys, it, it's, it's in my history. You know, you guys watch my fights. You guys go back. You guys go back to all my fights. I'm a different guy every time. You know, and uh, and come July 27, you guys are gonna see a different a different guy in there again. You know, uh, the kid that showed up in in April. 
the guy you're looking at sitting in front of him will kill that kid, you know, I'll body him, you know, it's, it, there's no comparison, and um, it happens, you know, it's like I said in my Instagram post, you know, things, this, this sport or life period is like shoots and ladders, you know, sometimes you gotta slide down to climb up a bigger ladder, and uh, and like you said, you know, 50, 55 ain't, ain't wear off, you know, it ain't fall off, it, that's only 10 pounds, you know, it, that's all it is, it's 10 pounds, you know, we, we get back there when we get back there, and uh, Hopefully it's sooner than later, and we see what happens. You know, if, if it takes a 10-fight win streak to fight for another belt up there and become a double champ, it takes a 10-fight fight, fight streak. You know, that's what it is. I ain't, I ain't scared of no work, and you guys all know that. And uh, you know, I'm put my nose down and get to work, I guess. As you're getting older, I mean, how long do you think you can maintain, you know, cutting weight and getting down to? Uh, I always see what happens. You know, like I said, I, I got, I got some of the best guys. You know, I got the nutrition part figured out, the training part and stuff. So. We see what happens. How, how long more 45 we can go? You know, I'm not gonna say nothing. We don't know. We don't. I don't know the future. You know, if you know somebody who does, you know, let me know. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, I can't. I can't wait. You know, I can't wait. You know, 45. Everybody give me a hard time. Like you're big. This like it was funny because people say like you're a big 45er. And then when I fought Dustin, people was like being like you're a small 55er. I'm like, you guys need to make up your guys' mind. You know what I mean? Like uh, it, it is what it is. You know so. I, 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 I really don't know what the future holds, you know, all I know is that uh, I got Frank Edgar in front of me and, uh, you know, full steam ahead. Dustin fought at 45 before, mm. but uh, it's been years, and he's uh. kind of, he's put on weight, he's put on muscle yeah. since then. If you were to make that jump up against 55, would that be something that you'd want to have more time to do to kind of pull your body out more and, and kind of do like what, you know, what Dustin did and some other guys have done? Yeah, you know, it's funny, like, I, I, I hear people saying, like, short notice fights, like, I took this short notice fights, this and that, like, if you look at it, like, I, I probably had, I had a lot of short notice fights, you know, and then, uh, especially in, uh, especially that 55 fight that came out of nowhere, I think so, how, how, how many weeks we had? Yeah, yeah, seven weeks, you know what I mean? Right. And that's, that was seven weeks to the fight day, so I only had, I only could train, like, six weeks, and we still was coming off of the December thing, uh, my December fight, and we was figuring stuff out, so... Uh, we see what happens, you know. I, if it's when I make the move, I make the move, and I decide to put on more muscle and, and this and that. Like, you know, people keep. There's always a narrative that people try to spew. Like, oh yeah, he had to. Like how you said, he got to be there. He had to wait. This and that. It's like there's no difference. You know what I mean? Like, and after this fight, they call me up for August to fight DC. Guess what? I'm weighing around 210, 220 pounds. I make that walk and I'll fight him. You know what I mean? Like, there's no there's no time in this. If you want to be the greatest pound for pound fight in the world, I don't think so. You should use weight as an excuse, you know, or anything really as an excuse. You know, you just show up to fight. You got the call for uh, for Dustin seven weeks out. How heavy were you? I, wa I, I don't even know. I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't crazy heavy, but I wasn't... Uh, I, we wasn't even training to be honest when we was doing the stuff we just I was like me and my me and my manager uh, me and my team actually was figuring out stuff about uh, about training wise and and we just was trying to figure out a bunch of stuff that was that was going on on the team you know and trying to help my health and stuff and and move forward in that way and then uh, we got the call and you know opportunities like that you don't miss you know you, you show up and uh, this fight it's back at 45 is it any tougher now? After doing that 55 cut to come back down all the way to 45. Ah uh, no, you know I, I I mean I my my meal my my plates maybe looked a little bit like like this you know maybe and a little bit smaller now but that's it you know it comes with the grind you know it's just it's just another it's another fight another fight at 45. So in that fight did you feel like in 145 that you stopped cutting weight or did you actually feel like 145? I felt like the man. <laughs> I will tell you straight up I start I tell you straight up you know everybody everybody be like. They keep trying to use the weight thing as an issue. I don't give a, I don't care. I don't care what the weight was, you know. Like, I felt like the man. I felt like I felt every, every fight. The training camp, I felt great. Everything went great, you know. It's just, I didn't get my hand raised, you know, how people was used to seeing it over the last five years, you know. And uh, and it happens, you know. It happens, you know. Some, sometimes you got to run into these roadblocks to uh, to refocus and, and, and re-go and rethink stuff and you know things happen for a reason obviously that loss was something you had to deal with but how did many blocks take it uh, he was fine you know he was fine actually you know that through an agony everybody saw it you know like uh uh dustin got to console him uh a shot consoled him when he was crying and i got to talk to him after and i and i told him you know like what were you crying for like were you crying because daddy was like bleeding or you know getting punched and he said no i was like what i was like why are you crying he's like 
crying because you lost. I'm like, what? I like this, you know, you know, like the uh, people was giving me a hard time about a kid shouldn't be there front. Like it's all his kid, no. Like he been in the gym. He's been in the gym with me when we didn't have babysitters. Like he, he, this, this is what he grew up watching. You know, what I mean, like he's a warrior, a samurai. You know, in the ancient days, whatever it is, sparked it. That's what he is. You know, and 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 he saw this. And then the thing that that kind of was funny that I knew why he was crying, uh, cause I lost. That's it. You know, like the kid's a competitor. You know what I mean? Like we're we're at home playing. He's playing. He's at home playing at WWE with my friends uh, Josh and, and Bird. And like he's like a competitor to the point where like he cries when he loses. Like he's like they're like they're they're mobbing him. They're like stop, stop mobbing me. And then when and then when like start full on tearing. And then somehow he wins the 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 death match. And then they're like and he's like yeah, I told you guys I was the man. So the kid is just a competitor, you know. It's just in all of us. He's got a hell of a role model. Yeah. Is he gonna fight? Is, is he gonna no? So I had this talk. If you guys ask him if he's gonna fight. I already know what his answer is going to be. I told him that he needs to be a doctor. Someone needs to take care of daddy when he when he's done. And uh, why not invest in your own, you know? So I told him, you need to be a doctor. So if you guys asked him and come up to him, he'd say, I'm going to be a doctor. But he probably would say he wants to fight. So, you know, he, I got him doing jiu-jitsu. He does a little boxing here and there. But we see what happens. You know, the kid, uh, the, he can do whatever he likes. I'm not going to stop him. I'm not going to stop him. If he wants to fight, if he wants that life, uh, then he wants it, you know, but I'm fighting so he don't have to do that life and uh, you know, hopefully Doctor sounds real real nice right now. So hopefully he do that. You talk about you know providing for him so he doesn't have to have that life I know you do a lot for the community. Can you talk about some of the outreach and you know, how you've been giving back? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, I I always try, you know, like um, after I think so the the first uh, first all the belt uh, you know, we ended up framing uh, framing some. I got some for the coaches and stuff, and then I gave one to the local boxing gym that I did so they can see, the kids can see, and just be privileged. You know, I try to talk to the kids, this and, uh, this and that, when I can, and, and reach out to them because they're the future. You know what I mean? They're the future. And, and I always tell them, like, and every time there's a, a career day uh, for uh, for the elementaries or, or the middle school, I always try to go to that because I try to tell them, like, I know how it was, you know, like, I was in their shoes. I remember, I remember being 8th grade, was a career day. I remember being 8th grade, a guy came talk to us, and I was, like, looking at him, like, like, just, just another kid, you know, just another kid being like, you don't know how it is around here, you don't know what we got to deal with, or this and that. And just being mad at the world, you know what I mean? And um, I remember the guy come in and talk to us, and it went one ear and right out the other. And when I go talk to these kids, actually my eighth grade teacher stood uh, was was stood there when I went, uh, my science teacher, and I wasn't the the best well behaved kid, but uh, it is what it is, you know. But uh, I I talked to his class and I said like, look, like I sat like my table was sit there, his setup was sit the same. It was funny. I was like, look, I sat there. I know what it is. I grew up here. I'm, I'm just not a guy telling you guys you guys can't do this. Like. I see some of the most talented people in the world come from my side of the town, you know what I mean? Or, or these, or just poverty or whatever, or whatever you want to put it, like low income families. Some of the most talented people come up in the world from there. And you just got to believe in yourself, you know? These guys listen, they, they listen to, uh, to higher ups when they get to it, something, they'll be like, oh, you're not going to ever make it. Like, no way. Like, I was told a million times, you know what I mean, uh, about this. And, I just try to give the kids hope and, and feeling like, look, you can do it. Because I was there. I was sitting in that chair. And I would tell them, like, look, I was there. I was, I was out. Actually, I would tell them I wasn't there. I'm lying. I was at the, the, at the office. And I got a chair over there, too. You know, I was, I was mostly over there. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I just want, want to let them know, like, you guys can do it. And you guys got to get out of your bubble, you know. Like, it's, it's so crazy. Like, I saw, I saw guys that, that uh, I thought was supposed to go to league, the NFL, the MLB, uh, or whatever they want to do. do. I, saw, I saw them go, and then they come back because they just miss home, or, or they had girlfriend problems, or something else came up, or they just couldn't do it. I was like, bro, no way. You know what I mean? No way. Like, look, guys, like, you guys got to think. You guys think it's short term. Like, you guys miss your guys' family, this and that, but when you guys make it, you move your family wherever you at. You know what I mean? And... and so I, I just give them hope, you know. I, hopefully I can give them hope, you know. I always said, when this all said and done, you know, I of course I'm going to be remembered one of the greats, but uh, at, the end of, at the end of the day, if I could change one person's life, you know, that 
and that, that's what it's about you know changing people's lives you know they you want to leave the leave this world be, a better place than when you got into it you know that, so that saved me heavy you know so so one kid that i talked to at elementary or the intermediate came knocking on my door when i was all done and retired and say look hey look mr holloway i did this because of you you know thank you for that speech then that that's crazy that's what we all i think so that's what we all in this whole life try to try to do you know and uh you just give them that hope, you know, just be that hope. Are you still bugging them about UFC Hawaii? Because, I mean, they're going to UFC Uruguay and all these spots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we see what happens. You know, I heard UFC, uh, I, I, I hope so, UFC Hawaii happens soon. You know, the stadium, I think so. They're going to do some, um, they're going to put a new stadium in. Like, uh, they're going to start fixing the stadium. Uh, not fixing. They're going to knock it down and make a whole new stadium. So, before they knock it down, I want to be in UFC Hawaii. You know, we see what happens. We got a... Uh, the contender series is signed to two Hawaii guys, and uh, you know my my boy Maki, you know Maki Vitoli, shout out to him. He just got he's one of the guys. He's the most recent Hawaiian that got signed to UFC, and uh, and I, you know I, I'm so grateful. You know I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that for that guy. You guys think so? You guys saw something amazing. That guy is he's on the special. He you know he's a big boy, 85er, but that's the kind of guy I had to deal with while I was getting ready for Aldo, not once but twice. So so he's the man that he's the man that. Got me ready for the man, you know, for to win, to win this, the undisputed. So he's the man. You've been, nice. pretty, you've been pretty open calling out the greatest featherweight of all time. Would a win over Frankie Edgar be enough to maybe move past him? Never ever, you know. I it, it's uh it's um it's the way you look at it, and, and and like for me, people people got different ideas about who's the greatest ever, you know. And for me, um, he got the stats, you know what I mean. So like. I gotta go, you know, he got X amount of title defenses, X amount of wins, and so on and so on. So, if that's the stats I gotta do, that's the stats I gotta do, you know. And, you know, right now, I ain't even worried about that. I ain't even thinking about it, you know. We got we, we got a lot of work to do, a lot of things ahead, and um, that, that's the main focus, you know. The division's kind of, it's, it's, it, it, it didn't go away, but you got like Korean Zombie came back, uh, both and Austin just beat out, but you had a lot of new contenders. How much, even when, when you were at Lightweight, I, you know, I say what uh, it, it is. What it is, you know. I was, wasn't really pay attention, you know. Um, kings, they, kings, they focus on their villages, you know. I'm making sure my villagers and everybody's cool, you know. <laughs> all my, all, uh, you know, all joking aside, but I just focus on me, you know. I focus on my fans. I focus on what we do, and uh, you know, if we're talking about that, is. Everybody keep talking about negotiations, you know, like, oh yeah, I gotta negotiate this and negotiate that. They doing negotiations with the wrong people, you know. Negotiating with UFC is it's terrible. If you wanna fight, go negotiate with the fans. The fans made some of the most craziest fight happens and we all was witness with one of the most craziest, biggest fights. So, you know, if if, if you wanna negotiate with somebody, you need to negotiate with the fans, get them behind you and uh, if you wanna fight, then uh, Get those fans to start chirping. What do you make of Henry Cejudo saying he's paying attention to Frankie Edgar's fight against you? He doesn't talk about you, but he talks yeah. a lot about Frankie Edgar. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is, you know. He didn't say my name, so I don't, I don't have to talk about him, so it's cool. Max, were you aware that um, only one other champion has lost a fight at another division and come back down and successfully defend the better title? Were you aware of that? No, I didn't. All the time in the UFC. No, who did it? Someone uh, who comes from the same state as you. BJ Penn. For real? Lost the GSP. Oh, that's came dope. Back and defended the lightweight title. Well, well, you got, we got a bunch of history going on with that then, you know. And then BJ got got a little bit of history with Frankie. So it's going to be fun on that. That's good. Thanks for giving me some good energy. I just feel it now. <laughs> is, there, is there a certain mentality there that coming off the loss, you know, you're, you're still the champion in that division, but you're coming off a loss. Is there a certain mentality you have to have to come back and defend that, that throne? Yeah, for sure, you know, but like I said, I told you guys all the time before, like, that belt is like, I, I, I'll kick this belt off the off the table if I could. It, it ain't nothing, you know, like, uh, I was a champion way before I was sitting in front of you guys. I was a champion, uh, you know, way before, when I first got in the UFC. I knew I was gonna be a champion, you know, and that's the way I conduct myself, and that's the way I talk, and that's the way I fight, you know. Like, this belt is only to let people know, like, look, I'm the undisputed guy. But I've been trying to tell people I'm the undisputed for a while now, and uh, and that's just it's just a mindset, you know. what I mean, it's a mindset. It's it's whatever you do, you know. I'm sure you got all you guys gotta be like, I'm the best. 
uh, uh, MMA uh, MMA reporter. I'm the best videographer. I'm the best. You know that, but that's the energy you need to wake up. That gets you up in the morning and gets you ready and prepared for your job. Do you compartmentalize uh, the two divisions at all, like the Dustin fight? Do you say like, okay, that was a different division. It's not something that I maybe did that was wrong in that fight, but yeah. just the circumstance, not what I did wrong. Do yeah. you compartmentalize that at all? Not really. Not really. You know, I just. A fight is a fight, man. A fight is a fight, you know. That's the way I look. I look at every single fight. I look at every single fight different, but I just I don't look at weight or this and that. Like I look at fight like, like uh, I you know I, I sound like a broken record, but like I look like a fight like how to how to beat DC. If I got the call in August, I'll look into it. You know, I'll figure out a way. You know, that's we're fights. You know, like back in the olden days, these guys didn't walk around with scales and be like, hey, wait. Put the scale on, they stepped on, and be like, "Yeah, I cannot fight you. You're, you're half pound over me. You got me. No, you know these guys just fought. They showed up to fight, and that, that's what true warriors do, you know. And uh, and we, people like to call us modern day gladiators, or whatever. You know, live like it. You, you already had to prepare, prepare for Frankie. You had to fight Ortega. What was it like having to you know train for him again? Did you do anything differently? Was it hard to get motivated? No, it's not hard hard to get motivated at all. It's just weird, you know, like. Cause like uh, I was supposed to fight him, and then it didn't happen. I was supposed to fight him again, and then it didn't happen. So it's just, it's, this is the first time in my career that I ever had to do that with somebody. Period. So it it's not crazy hard, but you know he gets better. You know what I mean? So all the film that you watched on him and this and that, that you game plan for this one thing, and then he was only to have one fight. You know, he only had one fight in between the fights we fought, and he, and he saw my two fights. So he get to watch kind of different films and and, and and strategize and whatever. But yeah, it's just it's just different. It's just different. But the motivation never ever crushed the motivation. The boy the boy is always motivated. Uh, and uh, and Frankie's Frankie man. If you don't give this guy the respect he deserved, he did something that was unthinkable, unheard of in a division higher than us when he was a much smaller dude. So I can't wait. You know, they, 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 these are the fights that excite me. You know, he the man's a legend. The man's a legend. Uh, if he's not a Hall of Famer, uh, he, he's a future Hall of Famer. If not, he's definitely a Hall of Famer in my eyes, at least. And uh, no, not to buy respect for. The most important question of, of <laughs> some of this bottle cap challenge. <laughs> what is what is going on here? How did this start? My man, my man, my man, Earlson. You know, from from acronym. He he uh, he the one. He actually did it, and then he tagged me, and he he told me to do it, and then. And then uh, I came up with an idea, like he always talked about how John Mayer was like, John Mayer was surprising a lot of things. And damn, did John Mayer surprise me in his, in his <laughs> kicking ability? I was tripping out, you know? And, uh, and it, just, it just went crazy, you know? You see the Kendall Kardashian Bieber doing it. it you just see, you see you see cars doing it. I'm like, I just saw Spongebob do it. I was like, what? I was like, how does Spongebob do it? You know, the new game. That new game, Borderlands, did it. I'm like, what is going on? You know, it took the world by storm. So I, uh, it was cool to see. You know, it's cool. It, it was a way to, uh, uh, it, it was more more of a way of not making people watch the sport. People is martial arts, you know, and, and the way of, like, so much people told me, that, oh, that, I wouldn't do it, uh, this and that. Like, I can't do it. It looks hard. Like, try it. You don't know until you try. You know, you really don't know. And then, and then of course, you got people like, oh, I'm holding the bottle. I'm not holding the bottle, this and that. I'm like... Guys, come on, we're getting too crazy now. I feel like it didn't blow up until you did it, right? It didn't really blow up big until you did it. I mean, I, I mean, I think, I think, I think, you know, uh, Earl, Earlson is the man for tagging me. John Mayer is the man for doing it, and then Jason Statham. Oh my gosh, when he did it, that's crazy, you know. And then, and then I think so. The icing on the cake of mine's one is that everybody just talk about how it just keeps spinning, and it just stays on, you know. Everybody just wants to kick and flies off, so it's. It's pretty cool. What do you think of McGregor's? McGregor's? Yeah, the thing McGregor's. Yeah, if you talk about it, you know, when I when I kicked it, you know, like Connor Connor's one, when he kicked it, his bottle went flying, his bottle cap went straight flying off, you know. When I kicked mine, mine just kept spinning and spinning and spinning, and boop, and stayed on, you know what I mean? So it's preferences, you know. Some people win championship belts, some people defend them. So whatever <laughs> preference you want. Does anyone recognize you from the ball cap challenge rather than I'm actually, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of funny. They know I'm a UFC champion because once they go, but 
but but people are like people now is like yeah bottom cup challenge instead of like not, not even talking about me like hey you're hey you're the bottom jump team challenge guy i'm like yeah dope thank you boss uh, it's cool so yeah some people did in la actually before we came here like two people was like yeah bottle cup challenge that's sick max all the way freaking champ i'm like yeah that's funny that's that's cool have you had your manager try to parlay that into a sponsorship oh we see what happened we we be we be working on some stuff we got some stuff announcing soon so hopefully i was also curious how do you think dustin's going to do against habib you know, as a fan, you know, as, as a fighter, I, I hate picking sides on fights, you know what I mean? Like, we run into all each other and this and that, so I, I hate picking fights and, and whatever and who's going to win, this and that, but as a fan, I'm excited to watch. You know, I'm excited to watch, you know. Um, um, the, if you look at uh, Dustin's last fight, the, the things that he could do to former champs and stuff, impressive, you know, impressive stuff. And then you look at Khabib, you know, imp impressive, you know, impressive stuff, so... I just can't wait, you know, I can't wait. I, I think it's going to be a good fight, a hard-nosed fight. We see who show up that night and, um, you know, it's going to be a fun one. You know, like, a, 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 lot, a lot of times, like, I like to tell people, like, look, nobody gave Alaquinta a shot. Nobody at all. And Alaquinta was one of the most, like, actually, I think so, Alaquinta, like, run around or something, yeah, they said or something like that. So, we never, it's, it's, MMA is a weird sport. That's why you got to love it.